In addition to the loss of parking spaces at the Recreation Center, congestion of traffic in front of Naismith and Oliver Halls, as well as along 19th Street is another potential issue. Having just celebrated 45 years of existence, the Minority Engineering Program will look to have an even greater impact in the years to come. And it's right here at the Olathe Pavilion Building where the Kansas Center for Autism and Research helps children affected by autism. Over the next year, students may find it a bit harder to be able to find parking spots on campus. The KU Parking and Transit Department's proposed changes to parking regulations for the 2016-17 school year will result in the temporary loss of over 1,300 parking spaces. This comes as a result of the current construction being done on the Central District. Director of Parking and Transit Donna Holtine says the most affected areas will be the yellow student parking lots. Um, it'll be yellow student lots. So um, the biggest one is lot 90, which is where you know the majority of students um, start out their day trying to find parking. The proposed parking changes will result in the temporary loss of over 1,300 parking space and parking lots all across campus, including here in lot 72, right behind Allen Fieldhouse. In addition to the lots by Allen Fieldhouse and the Rec Center, other areas will be losing parking spaces as well. Lot 114 will be losing over 100 parking spots, which affects Jayhawker Towers and Daisy Hill residents. Existing yellow lot parking will also be limited as a result. The loss of so many spaces will make things difficult in the interim for students trying to park on campus. It's great that they're adding spots next year, for, but in the meantime, it sucks for all of us, especially for seniors parking on campus is already hard I mean I'll probably just end up taking the bus the rest of the semester once the construction ends however the lost parking spaces will return and then some as an additional 236 spaces will be added the majority of those will be located where McCollum Hall used to be Holtine is preaching patience to students in the meantime I mean, it's going to help. It really is going to help. I know that students, some will think it's painful if they don't get the lot that they want. It's going to be one year of, of tight parking, and then um, in February of 2017, we hope to have a, a new garage open in the Central District, and um, then we'll be able to shuffle students back to that area, and um, it'll just be one year, one quick year. <laughs> In the short term, however, students will have to make do with the lack of parking spaces on campus. Reporting from Lawrence, this is Matt Kaufman, KUJH News. Since its inception in 2008, the Kansas Center for Autism Research and Training, or KCART, has been making a difference through its efforts to promote understanding, research, and training of autism spectrum disorders. KCART's autism training program is no different. The program's mission is to, through training, increase the number of qualified service providers in Kansas who can facilitate development in children with autism. And it's right here at the Olathe Pavilion Building where the Kansas Center for Autism and Research helps children affected by autism. Uh, the purpose of the training that these folks are attending is to increase their skills around intervening with kiddos with autism. Kerner says half the training involves the trainees increasing skills they want to see more of in the children while also decreasing behaviors they want to see less of. About 1 in 68 children are affected by autism, making programs such as the Autism Training Program so vital. Kurtner, who has a nephew with autism, said seeing the positive changes from training like this is life-changing. Like a lot of people, uh, this field kind of found me in the sense that once I had seen that kind of behavior change, I couldn't imagine going to do anything else with the rest of my life. The program provides families of children with autism with enormous help in a world where sometimes that help can be hard to come by. It means that those families that historically um, didn't have access to intervention, those, I, those families that, you know, they're given this diagnosis and then they're kind of set on their way. It's like um, being sent. Um, adrift at sea, in a, at sea in a rowboat with no oars and no sail. It's like, what do you do? KCART's autism training program clearly has a very special impact, not just on the children, but on their families as well. Reporting from Lawrence, this is Matt Kaufman, KUJH News. Starting at 6 a.m. sharp on the second floor of Allen Fieldhouse on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, 
you'll see all different types of ages at a Red Dog's Dog Days workout, from young to old, all going at their own pace. The older participants see the go-at-your-own-pace style as a great and accessible way to stay fit as the years add up. Don Gardner, a.k.a. Red Dog, has been leading the popular local workout program for over 33 years, since the summer of 1984 to be exact. Gardner started it as a means to prepare the Lawrence High football team for its fall season, but it's become so much more than that in the years since. The Red Dog's Dog Days community is very close-knit and is always welcoming of newcomers, so long as you're ready to embrace the workouts and, of course, the people. Reporting from Lawrence, Matt Kaufman, KUJH News. In the KU School of Engineering, the Minority Engineering Program has offered so much to minority students over the past four decades. Personally, uh, this is like home, family. Eric Odeny is this year's vice president of the National Society of Black Engineers, one of four diversity programs within the School of Engineering, along with the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, and the Women in Engineering program. I can come and talk with individuals about my experience as an African American at KU within the School of Engineering. Uh, moreover, it's a chance to be aware of minorities uh, at KU School of Engineering, so I get a chance to experience history and other diverse individuals. These national programs all got their beginnings at KU thanks to the inception of the Minority Engineering Program, which just celebrated its 45th anniversary. Director for Diversity and Women's Programs Florence Boldridge says support and community for minorities within the school is the program's biggest strength. There's such a need for support, in particular among minority ranks. And this program plays a huge part of that. Having just celebrated 45 years of existence, the Minority Engineering Program will look to have an even greater impact in the years to come. I would love to see it be three times what it is right now. Uh, the biggest factor, and we're going to have a very big push in the fall of the year to have an even bigger presence, and that's in the recruitment, but more so the retention of minority students. In the meantime, Baldridge and students like Odeny will continue to demonstrate the importance of diversity and community within the School of Engineering, something that's been going 45 years strong here at KU. This is a collective effort, humanity, and so we should all be interested in making sure that we're all represented fairly, equally, so we can live the lives that we, that we really want to live. Reporting from Lawrence, this is Matt Kaufman, KUJH News.